Hello there! What is going on everybody? Today I'm coming at you with an Armada build. We're going to do a Wave 8 Rebel build using the new Starhawk and uh, Ryan Kingston has updated his fleet builder. I will put a link to Ryan Kingston's fleet builder in the description below because I am using that and this is just a web-based fleet builder. It is very friendly for mobile as well. So if you are interested in uh, checking this out, it's a great little fleet builder. I absolutely love it. So we do have the new, uh, basically everything that's been spoiled for Wave 8 right now. This is not everything that's available for Wave 8 because there's still some unspoiled cards uh, out there. But uh, this is everything that we know of right now. So, so that's pretty cool. It gives us the ability to do some fleet building. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to be using uh, a Starhawk. I'm going to go with our cheaper model here, the Starhawk Battleship Mark 1. And let me also remind you guys about the giveaway right now. I'm doing 12 days of Life Day giveaway all throughout the month of December. If you want to have a chance to win something, all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. And those will be announced kind of at random throughout December. So you never know when it's going to happen. Uh, some of the winners will also be announced uh, on Twitter or Facebook. You can check those in the description as well. And you can... Uh, also, um, check Patreon out if you're interested in supporting the channel because anything that is not claimed uh, come January will then roll over as additional Patreon giveaways. So, now that I've got a Starhawk in my list, uh, you know, that was step one, right? We've got the Starhawk in the list. What do we want to make for this list? So, I thought it would be fun to have a Radus themed Starhawk list. I thought I want to drop, you know, this is our, our little bit, you know, more black dice intensive, plus our cheaper Starhawk, and Radis is not a cheap, well, he's moderately uh, priced, but uh, yeah, I wanted to go for Radis, and uh, whoops, no, wait, no, no, we're actually going to go squadronless for this build, but I'm going to put a CR-90A, and uh, and I my, my thought here is like, hey, if I can drop this, you know, dropping an MC-75 near somebody is one thing, but dropping a Starhawk near somebody is a totally different ballgame. And I think uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. So I'm going to put Radis on a uh, CR90A, uh, and I, I I think I'm going to um, I'll do the rest of the build last. But I want to put a few things in the Starhawk now. Naturally, since um, I'm going to try to have a lot of ships because with Radis you do want a lot of ships out there, so you have more options of where you want to place something. I'm not going to um, put that much on this particular Starhawk. This isn't just a standard, like, here's my Starhawk, it's coming at you kind of build. This is more of like the, you know, something a little different. So uh, one of the things I definitely want to do is when I do deploy Radis, I want the ability to be at maybe deploy at speed one and potentially do a nav, slow down to speed zero. And I will basically try to be, uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, slow another another ship down. So I've got the Magnite Crystal Tractor Beam array. Uh, and, and, and I love this for a super weapon because basically this is going to allow us to slow another ship down or speed a ship up, but basically uh, slow another ship down. And I think the real strength of this is that you this is the only way you can actually just set another ship to be speed zero um, in the middle of the game, which is really, really strong. That's one of the reasons it's costed at 10 points. Uh, that's another one of the reasons why it's, uh, you know, an upgrade that's only available to one ship. Even if super weapons become available to other ships in the Rebellion, this one has the Starhawk picture there. So it means you can only ever put this on the Starhawk. So if they get a cheap super weapon platform, still not going to be available. So you already have, you know, 140 point tax on this particular upgrade. So 150 points in minimum just to be able to get the ability to slow another ship down so that's that's important and that's worth noting now i think if we are going to now also that i also want to point out if you're speed zero you can't ready this card so what this means is you're going to get one shot at it uh which means then your following turn you're going to try to want to hopefully speed up and then you know after that uh hopefully um you know maybe you'll have one more chance to use it at some point uh, but yeah, this is probably going to be a one-shot deal. More than likely, my guess is you're going to get one use out of this. Now, that's okay. That's okay, because one use can't, might be all you need. So, um, for our titles, I wanted to put the Concord. This is the most expensive title, uh, but one of the things that makes the Concord so great is that um, 
it, it actually works while we're at speed zero. So if we're at speed zero, we can spend one defense token. Sometimes that brace is all you need, you know. Um, but this is also going to give us an extra uh, an extra salvo. So we're actually going to have uh, five defense tokens, which is real nice. Um, so I, you know, I very much like that. And uh, yeah, so that much is cool. By the way, the the Starhawk uh, Mark One has amazing artwork too. It's showing the Starhawk being constructed out of dismantled uh, Star Destroyer parts right there. It's so such a great uh, such a great graphic. Love it. All right, um, so we do have the Concord on there. We're going to put a few other things in there. Um, I think activations are going to be very, very important, and I'll explain why, but I want to have Strategic Advisor on here so I can stall uh, because I think it's going to be huge. Um, ideally, the ship that I'm going to set to speed zero, I will want them to have gone first. I want them to have, have already gone by the time I you know, make them speed zero. And so being able to stall with Strategic Advisor is going to be important. Now, granted, that's not going to work every round because, well, hey, Rados is going. So, you know, that's um, that's something that we have to think about. Uh, but also, I'm going to put the uh, linked Turbolaser Towers on this one. Not the, you know, not an upgrade that's making full advantage of everything we're doing here, but it is a real good option. Like, honestly, I think the Mark II is maybe a little better because, hey, you can use that against all of the squadron attacks you're doing, and that's cool, but points are kind of at a premium right now, so um, so that's kind of what we're doing. So, Link to, yes, Link to Laser Tower is better on the Mark II, but still pretty good here. It's just, it's just such a versatile and useful upgrade. Uh, I absolutely love it. So that's why we're going with that one. Uh, and that's it. That's all the upgrades we're going to put on the Mark I for this particular build. Um, it could obviously take a whole lot more than that, but I need points for the rest of my fleet. So what else am I adding? So I've got Radis on a CR-90. Well, at first, like as I was running through builds here, I was thinking, you know, how many TRC-90s can I fit? Because I could just go one, boom, boom, boom. Well, you know, I could fit... Almost, um, you know, four more CR 90s with Turbolaser reroutes. So, if it worked out in such a way, you know, that I was able to, you know, slow down their ship to speed zero and then activate a whole bunch of CR 90s all with that T TRC and get like, you know, three or more damage from each one that they can't brace any of it or redirect any of it, you could really, you know, start poking holes in enemy ships very, very quickly. And I thought that sounded just magnificent and I really wanted to do that. But I think we can maybe work a few other things out. So I am going to put one TRC-90 in there. And since it's my flagship, I'm going to give it Jaina's Light. Jaina's Light is going to be good. It's going to allow me to kind of put this hide behind obstacles, make my own attacks a little more obstructed as they're coming in to me while I don't have to deal with obstructed stuff and I can hide on asteroids or whatever I need to do. Jaina's Light's actually, I think, maybe the best CR-90 title for your commander because it lets you play the evasion game. Also is uh, useful for trying to get into a decent position to drop the Starhawk. Um, so what else are we going to put? Uh, I am going to kind of pad the list a little bit for activations. I'm going to take the cheesy approach and put two GR-75s in here. Uh, they are going to be configured a little bit differently, though. Um, first one, I am going to give to... Uh, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to run e both titles. I am going to run Bright Hope, and I'm going to run Quantum Storm. Uh, because, well, I just think that is very, very important. Um, now, Quantum Storm is going to get Slicer Tools, uh, and then Bright Hope is going to get ComsNet. And one of the reasons for ComsNet is I may have to put a Nav Token on that star Starhawk to potentially get them out of speed zero. Um, comes and that's just all around useful but that's kind of one of the um the driving factors here is uh that starhawk is going to need some some token support i'm guessing and if they don't need the nav they might need the engineering and a lot of it depends on what is going on uh primarily if my opponent is running something kind of like me with the slicer tools here now slicer tools uh works really nice on the quantum storm because quantum storm lets me uh, do potentially two maneuvers a turn so if the first one doesn't get me close enough i can then uh try to nav and get an extra you know an extra move and hopefully that lets me then trigger slicer tools which would be cool uh but yeah so slicer tools are gonna be great if i can then basically 
The combo here is the Starhawk uses the Magnite Crystal Tractor Beam right to set another ship to speed zero, and then Quantum Storm comes in, slices that ship, changes their top command dial. Now they cannot nav to get out of it. Now, obviously, there's still ways around that. Things like, for example, ComsNet would potentially get them out of it. However, um, this is just a little extra insurance. And Slicer Tools is useful all the time also because we're not running any squadrons in this build and we might want to shut down enemy carriers because that's also super, super important. So I like that much. Um, so we have a, a couple of different ships. We got a little bit of deployment help here because we're also going to lose the Starhawk for deployment. And we can stall with activations here with the GR-75s because, hey, they're not shooting anyway. So I can, and, and when I, the turn comes, I do drop that Starhawk. These guys aren't going to shoot. So what else do I want to do? Well, here we're going to go ahead and add some other things. We're going to add a Hammerhead Scout Corvette. Uh, and we are going to... This one is going to be fun because at, you know I used to like to run these guys with gunnery teams and spinal armament. But since I my, my strategy here, a lot of it kind of re revolves around making somebody speed zero. Well, if I can... Um, you know, quad battery turrets is not going to do a whole lot. So anybody else who gets through is going to be able to do that. But disposable capacitors kind of um, kind of covers both of my bases. I like quad battery turrets because some people, I think, are going to try to respond to, like, what they're seeing and saying, well, I need to speed up and get out of range of that Starhawk. So anybody who's going real fast, no problem. I've got you. I got you with the quads. Uh, anybody who is going slower... Um, than that, then they'll get caught by the Starhawk, maybe. Or or maybe not. We'll see. But I've got the disposable capacitors here also, so, uh, you know, I can slow down or go fast. Either way, uh, I'm, you know, I'll be able to hit that target uh, with, even at long range, like, basically enemy flagship or an enemy SSD or whatever, with three dice instead of just two. Uh, and I'm going to duplicate that one. We're going to have two of those. Uh, but... On this one, uh, I am going to also add Hondo Onaka. Hondo, my man Hondo here, is also going to help me get some tokens, just in case I might happen to need them. And that puts me at exactly 400 points. 400 points, exactly. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, alternatively, you know, we could we could potentially drop the length turbo laser. We could put quad battery turrets on the Starhawk as well and that would especially if i'm at speed zero i am going to always get the quad battery turret ability um which is nice I, well i say always but i'm not going to get it if i use salvo and that's kind of one of the other reasons that i put link turbo laser turrets as opposed to quads on the starhawk is because uh you can't add dice to your salvo attack uh and so i wanted re-rolls uh as opposed to the ability to add dice because um that gives you a re-roll which is nice uh, so that's so that is that is the build. Now for objectives, we are going to scroll down and uh, add an assault objective. For this one, I am going with most wanted since I have some cheap flotillas that uh, I can put it on, and if I have a pretty effective way of trying to uh, destroy an, an opponent's uh, flagship here, uh, and so that one should be pretty easy to get double points. Uh, for our defense objective, I'm going to go with Planetary Ion Cannon. Uh, this one really kind of factors into this, because if I'm able to shut you down to speed zero, this is going to take effect the turn, like basically before you get a chance to activate a ship. So this is another, another attack on you with, without the ability for you to spend defense dice, which is really, really cool. And for navigation, I'm going to go with Intel Sweep. Here, I think this one, you can probably change things around, but I think this is just an easy way to get 75 points here. Um, and and it's just as simple as that. Um, I, I, I have a lot of my eggs in one basket of trying to take out one person's ship, but if they've got a lot of other ships that are mobile or a lot of bombers or whatever, I may have to scatter the rest of the fleet after that, and that extra 75 points will help kind of give me some padding towards maybe a better, a better win, whereas, you know, if I could take out the flagship, that's great, but I might not be able to take out all the squadrons or or the other like you know uh, support vessels, and so uh, <laughs> you know that's uh, the intel sweep is to kind of help make up the difference from that. 
And uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's the list. So I would love to hear from you guys what you think. Let me know down in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and click that bell for alerts and all that good stuff. Stay tuned for uh, more giveaways that will be happening very, very, very soon. And we'll talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.